Hello! In this video, I will be solving a challenging limit. Needless to say, the discussion involves some or maybe plenty of calculus. The problem asks to find the limit as the quantity e to the x minus x minus 1 over x squared as x, x approaches 0. This problem was posted by Yamiko Fajardo in a Facebook group I am part of. As a challenge, he further asked not to use L'Hopital's rule or series expansion to evaluate the limit. First things first, we first have to try to evaluate the expression at x equals 0. Clearly, the numerator and the denominator both tend to 0, making the limit of the form 0 over 0. Our professors from Calculus 1 have likely emphasized to us that such limit is undefined. So just by substituting, we cannot get the limit of this expression. Before doing the challenge, let's first try the methods we were advised not to use. First of which is the L'Hopital's rule. Now since the limit is of the form 0 over 0, then L'Hopital's rule applies. Just in case you forgot or just you just don't know yet, L'Hopital's rule suggests that the limit of f over g is equivalent to the limit of f prime over g prime if the limit of f over g approaches 0 over 0. Hence, the limit of the given expression is equal to the limit of e to the x minus 1 all over 2x as x approaches 0. Note that e to the x minus 1 is a derivative of the numerator, which is e to the x minus x minus 1, while 2x is the, is the derivative of the denominator x squared. Again, if we try to evaluate this at x equals 0, we get 0 over 0 again. So L'Hopital's rule can be applied once more. Taking the derivatives of the numerator and the denominator gives us e to the x over 2. As x approaches 0, this expression approaches e to the 0 over 2, which simplifies to 1 half. Therefore, the limit is equal to 1 half. It's not quite challenging, right? Next, we try to use series expansion. Quite popularly, the function e to the x is known to be equal to the infinite series 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus and so on, where each term is in the form x to the n all over n factorial. This is known as the Maclaurin series of e to the x, or equiv equivalently, the Taylor series representation of e to the x centered at x equals 0. If we take out the x plus 1 from the series, the x plus 1s cancel out. This leaves only the terms x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial and so on in the numerator. Well, in the denominator, we still have x squared. Again, if you notice, each of the powers in the numerator has at least x squared as a factor. Therefore, the x squared in the denominator uh, cancel out. Thus, leaving us with an expression that is 1 over 2 factorial plus x over 3 factorial plus x squared over factorial and so on. If we evaluate this, this at x equals 0, every term except 1 over 2 factorial is equal to 0 or at least approaches 0, thus making the limit equal to 1 half, which is aligned to what we got uh, previously. Again, this probably isn't challenging for you. At this point, you are probably wondering why I named this a challenging limit. I have already provided you two solutions which are pretty straightforward. So maybe this isn't challenging enough. And maybe my goal was just to make it a clickbait title. But think about this. These two solutions 
that I have provided so far involves quite an array of relatively advanced topics, including, well, L'Hopital's, derivatives, and series expansions. If I want a fully justified solution from you, I might ask you why L'Hopital's rule works in the first place, or how the series expansion came about. My point is, this problem becomes more challenging, or at least probably, if we set aside those concepts and focus on just limits. So no expansions, no L'Hopital's rule. That's probably what the original poster want us to do. We can just think about it as just solving the problem when we were in this calculus one, when we were just introduced to limits. And so we proceed to a rather fun solution. In my solution, I'll make use of the fact that the limit of e to the x minus 1 over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. This is, I guess, one of the most common limits introduced to us in calculus 1 and one which can be evaluated using elementary methods. For the sake of the brevity of the solution, I'll just leave out the proof about this at the end of the video. You can check it out in the end. Using this null limit, we proceed as follows. First, we take the square of the given expression. We can definitely do so, do so because the limit exists. Since the original limit is equal to 1, then this operation still give out the limit of 1 squared or 1. The expression then becomes e to the 2x minus 2 e to the x plus 1 all over x squared, still as x approaches 0. Note that we have used the formula a minus b squared equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Now here comes the trick part. In the numerator, we add and subtract the term 2x plus 1. The motivation for this is to create or to bundle the e to the x, e to the 2x with 2x plus 1, so it gives some semblance to the original limit. The expression then can then be split as the limit of e to the 2x minus 2x minus 1 over x squared plus the limit of negative 2 e to the x plus 2x plus 2 over x squared. From the second group, we can definitely factor out negative 2, thus making the second expression just e to the x minus x minus 1 all over x squared. Looks familiar, right? To recap, we have the limit of the square of e to the x minus 1 over x equal to the limit of e to the 2x minus 2x minus 1 all over x squared minus twice the limit of e to the x minus x minus 1 over x squared. The first one, that's equal to 1 squared or 1. The last one is equal to 2L, where L is the original limit, the limit we want. So the next goal is then to evaluate the second expression, or at least express it in terms of L, or somehow like the last one, an expression involving L. And so, and so we proceed to achieving this goal. Notice that this expression is quite similar to the limit we want in that it has e to the something minus something times x minus 1 over x squared. And just by making appropriate substitution, which is specifically u equals 2x, then it becomes more and more similar to what we want. So the objective now is to rewrite the expression in terms of 2x. In doing so, we write the denominator as 2x over 2, then quantity squared. Note that if we simplify this, we can take out the factor of 4. Next, if we let the substitution, or if we use the substitution u equals 2x, we get an expression equal to e to the u minus u minus 1 over u squared as u over 2 approaches 0. Note that u over 2 approaches 0 if and only if 
u approach 0. Therefore, we can just change the limit and simplify it to u approaching 0. Hence, the limit of e to the 2x minus 2x minus 1 over x squared is equal to the limit of e to the x minus x minus 1 over x squared then times 4. Notice that I just replace u by x, which is totally fine. Now, that expression is related, very related to what we want. In fact, that is equal to L, which we previously defined to be equal to the limit we want. And so the mystery earlier has been uncovered now, and it's actually equal to 4L. And so we are left with an expression that consists of a bunch of Ls. And using the relationship, 1 equals 4L minus 2L, we'll get L is equal to 1 half. Therefore, the limit we want is equal to 1 half, which is aligned to what we got earlier. Personally, I think this is more, more challenging and more fun. We only use elementary techniques and some creativity along the way, which for me is way, way cooler. Out of curiosity, I look at the internet to see other solutions to this problem, hoping that I would find some, which I actually did. And I found an alternative solution in Quora, as posted by a certain Mr. Rafat. In fact, the solution I've come up with was also part of the thread. Anyway, this alternative solution looks as follows. First, he let the desired limit be equal to L. And then he replaced x with 2x to get e to the 2x minus 2x minus 1 over 4x squared. Note that we can multiply both sides by 4 just to get rid of the extra factor in the, in the expression. Also note that he purposely grouped 1 plus 2x and made use of the fact that 1 plus 2x is equal to the difference of x plus 1 squared minus x squared. For me, this is the most creative part of the solution. Can you guess why he did so? I suggest you pause the video for a while before proceeding on my explanation. Have you figured it out? His intent was to separate the x squared from the rest and get left with a difference of squares. So you, upon splitting this the expression, we get e to the 2x minus the quantity of x plus 1 squared all over x squared, and then plus 1, the plus 1 being x squared over x squared. And surprisingly, he factored out the difference of squared as a product of two expressions, which are quite easy to evaluate. The first one, the blue one, e to the to e to the x minus x minus 1 all over x is equal to L, while the red one, e to the x plus x plus 1 over x, approaches 2 as x approaches 0. Therefore, that difference of squares approaches 2L. And then we have the expression 4L is equal to 2L plus 1, which is now very, very easy to solve. So for L gives L is equal to 1 half, which is aligned to what we got earlier on. I personally think this solution is more creative than what I presented first. This is cool math. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and if you have any clarifications, you can let me know by leaving a comment below. You can also suggest topics for the next videos through the comment section. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more content. Thank you.